you need to help a person who really wants to live here, to be productive. It's just a win-win situation. Confidence is the biggest thing with them. A lot of them can speak English, but they're afraid to try. Today we're going to learn about a nonprofit organization that provides free English language instruction to adults in our community to help them realize their full potential as individuals, citizens, and parents. Join us as we catch up with Ellen Moore Osborne, Executive Director with Literacy Volunteers of Charlottesville Albemarle. Come on. Can you, can you write holiday or celebration in there? Uh, celebration. Okay. Literacy Volunteers is here because we want to teach individuals in the area how to read, write, and speak the English language. And who do you serve? We serve a variety of people. Um, many are from other countries. Mm -hmm. We have people who are here from 41 different countries who speak 38 different languages. Oh my, yeah. And we also serve some native-born people who are uh, learning to either read or write. Um, somehow they might have missed out on high school, or maybe they're retired and they're, it's time for them to learn to read the Daily Progress or, or anything that they're interested in. That's so great. And, and now the programs are just for adults, right? Yes, we only serve adults. How does it work? How does someone qualify? Well, one of the main qualifications is that we serve people who are going to stay in the area. Okay. okay. They're, yeah, they're from the area. They're, they live or work here, right? Right. They live or work in Charlottesville, Albemarle, or any of the contiguous counties okay. close by. If it makes sense for them to be able to come here and get services. And we will test them to find out their level, whether it's... Um, their English speaking level or reading level, um, so we know where we're starting. Measuring. Measuring spoon. Measuring spoon. What are these? Measuring cup. Very good, measuring cup. We recruit and train volunteers who agree to work about two hours a week for a whole year with an individual who really wants to learn the English language to become self-sufficient. Most of our students they come to us because they're having trouble functioning in the community. Either they can't read well enough or they, um, there's a language barrier for what they want to do. So we will find out what they want to work on, what their personal goal is, what part of their life they want to improve, and then we will match them with a volunteer tutor who has been trained. Um, we train the tutors very well so that they know what to expect and um, they're prepared for just about anything that comes along. We had a one-day session, and I'm like, what could they teach you in one day? But it was absolutely excellent. You do some prep work for your classes, of course, but it's an opportunity to give back and to help someone. I am from Iran. I come here to improve my English. Now I pass it the ESL 12 and ESL 13, but I'm stuck in the English 111. So give me an example of, of, of what they do when, when volunteers come and they're trained. What happens? Well, we get to know the tutor during the training session. We, we have an all-day training session where we get to know them a little bit and find out what their interests are. Some people want to work with people who are native to the area, and some people really have a desire to um, know somebody from a different culture. So um, we get to know the tutor, we train them, and then we match the tutor with what their interests are and with a student um, that kind of matches that interest. Uh, a lot of the time it's, you know, I want to work with somebody whose first language is Spanish or first language is um, Farsi or any of those types of things. We try and match the tutor's interest with the, the students we have available. And we always have students available. Usually we have about 20 to 40 on our waiting list who are waiting to be matched with a tutor. I lived in Afghanistan, no um, class, no school, no uh, work, no uh, university, no learning, anything, no, nothing. And uh, now I am, um, uh, I, um, I try, I all try for learning everything. We had to talk about goals. Do you want to get a better job? What is it? Why are you here? You had to say to your student, why are you here? And she said, I want to go to college and I want all five of my children to go to college. So I think when you have somebody with that kind of ambition and drive and optimism and hope, there's no limits. <laughs> 
while they're on the waiting list, they're still working toward their goal, right? Talk yes. about that. Yes. So we have uh, several things that we do with them while we get to know them because we want to work with people who are committed to the program. Um, so we will put them on a computer language program like Rosetta Stone or there's a couple others. And during this time, we get to see if they make their appointments, um, if they're committed to actually improving, uh, showing up. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some conversation groups where these are group situations where um, people who don't speak English as a first language will get together and, and practice pronunciation. Uh, they can learn some basic things like days of the week and weather and holidays and um, basic things that we need to be conversational with each other in this yeah. community. That is so great. And how many students this year have you are you having? In so the year? we will serve 450 this year. And um, how many volunteers? So we have 350 volunteers. So, you so there's a little need bit of volunteers. mismatch. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. And you know, students will stay for any length of time. We have people who want to come in and just learn something simple, well, simple to us. Like if they just want to learn enough to pass a driver's license test. Okay. Well, maybe that takes six or eight weeks. And so right. we get in, we, we acknowledge their goal, we match them with a tutor who will help them meet that goal, and then they may be done. And right. then that frees up the tutor for their next match. Okay. Um, but our real goal is to move them to the next educational step. Um, whether it's to a class in Charlottesville, Albemarle, or to PBCC. We just had a guy in here who was talking about how he had missed out in life on, on the opportunities to learn to read, and now I guess he's in his 50s and having a great time beginning to explore words. It's a wonderful reminder of what people can do when they want to. It also um, helps you see your community through, through new eyes. We have individuals who have never held a pencil before. And so not only are you teaching the language, mm. you're teaching the, the study skills and, the, and all of that that comes along with it, you know, the commitment and you know, yeah. how, to, how to memorize and how to piece things together. And the students are so dedicated. Yes. They really, really want to learn. Yes. By the time they get matched with a tutor, They've been here probably eight, at least eight weeks. Um, we try not to make them wait much longer than that, but it, it often depends on the availability of the tutors. So why is this so important in our community? How does this affect our community? Well, it's really, it's really about becoming self-sufficient. Um, it's really helpful for people who, um, you know, we have students who are PhDs in their home country, and they come here, and because of the language barrier, they are, they are kind of stuck in a lower level job, mm -hmm. not making a lot of money. And if they can get over that hurdle of the language, you know, maybe they can get back into their chosen fields and, and you know, follow their dreams in, in this country that might have been their dreams in a previous country. Oh, exactly. In Iran, my position is as a manager or conservator in the historical zone. I want to uh, share my experience my skills, my in the art, history, and culture for American teenagers. I have a very big dream. Take a GD for me, very important. <laughs> GED, uh -huh. very important. <laughs> so this is a free program, yes, right? Mm -hmm. So how are you able to provide this program? Well, we have a lot of individual donors, um, private foundations, the city of Charlottesville and Almar County help us a little bit. Um, we have a grant from the state of Virginia Department of Education. We have a very uh, mixed revenue stream. Mm -hmm. and we yeah. also have wordplay. Wordplay. Yes. So this That's is about 10% of our budget. 10% of your budget. And this has become such a popular community event. Mm -hmm. So tell us all about it. It's a lot of fun. Um, usually we have about 45 to 50 teams competing against each other about cultural literacy. And they get to, you know, talk about being the smartest group in town. Um, but the teams pay to participate and that's where we make our money. And then right. it, it's also um, open to audience. Audience tickets come in, you know, 20 bucks to come in and watch and play along and have a good time. Yeah, and I mean, Everybody attends. It's really, yeah. mm -hmm. it's become such a great community mm -hmm. event. And it's kind of unpredictable. We're not sure what the questions are going to be about every year. And 
It's, it's different every at year. At the Paramount, held at the Paramount Theater. Paramount. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the citizenship program. So we know that there are several hundred legal permanent residents in Charles Point, Albemarle. These are green card holders who are eligible to become citizens. And we have been working with our partner, the IRC, International Rescue Committee, to help identify these people and get them the tools that they need to finish that out. Um, whether it's English language acquisition or learning the 100 questions that they need to, to know for the test or help with their paperwork. And that's just been heartwarming to see new citizens sworn in that, you know, that we've worked with before. I know we had a, you know, an influx of immigrants coming into Charlottesville, and my own grandparents immigrated to the United States. I wanted everybody to have the same chance that my family has had. She had a job, and she was quick to learn as well. The students, I found, are very, very committed and very eager. Is the community supportive of yes. this organization? Yes, the community is very supportive, helping us spread the word about the need for volunteers. Um, day of caring, you know, we'll have days where volunteers come in and, and do things for us, stuff envelopes and, and things like that, so. And if someone wants to get involved, what do they do? Well, they can look us up on the web, literacyforall.org, it's F-O-R. A-L-L, -L, literacy for all, you know, because the English language is like 10 different ways you could do that. That's, I know. <laughs> right. Right. So it's literacyforall.org, or you can call our office, and we'll, we'll tell you when the next tutor training event is. Oh, We're having about 10 or 12 a year now because just the need, and we have to train the tutors to keep up with the demand. That's fantastic. Ellen, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for coming out. I've learned so much about their culture and about the different kinds of people from the world. You know, I've had people from 27 different countries. Thursday night is one of the best nights of the week for me. <laughs> I just feel good. <laughs> I want to say, all of them, I say thank you so much to help to all immigrants, all uh, foreign uh, people like me, and, and also the American uh, and native uh, people also here.